Hello, and welcome to part 5 of Ranking the Entire Demons List. This is the series in which I rank the entire Demons List. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're new here, I highly recommend going and watching the rest of the series before this part. There will be a playlist in the description. The first two episodes explain the rules of the series a lot better than these parts are going to, but for a very basic rundown, I'm reviewing the levels 10 levels at a time, and if a level gets placed above wherever I am in the part, I'll go back and review those as extra levels at the end of each part. So as I mentioned, these intros are going to start getting shorter because there isn't as much to say, so let's just get into the first level. So first up we have Rust. I think Rust starts off pretty cool on the first half. It's got a lot of kermal s gameplay, which is going to make it divisive by default, but it's pretty solid for the first half. The problem, in my opinion, is the second half. The end of the level just has the most generic and boring 33 seconds of Cube gameplay I've ever seen. It just goes on and on and doesn't change anything up. And to make matters worse, the level doesn't end on a satisfying proper beat. It just kind of ends while the song keeps going. So this just ends up feeling like a very directionless and dragged out ending, which makes the second half of the level very frustrating to watch. It really does just make the level feel dragged out, because without this 33 seconds of gameplay, the level is less than a minute long, but with this, it is a minute and a half. That tells me that the reason the level ends on such a random, improper beat is because the level doesn't end properly, it just ends the moment it gets to the 1 minute and 30 second mark. I am convinced that this level's ending is just there to pad the level out. That is about where my complaints end, though, because if you disregard the last 33 seconds of gameplay, which I'm going to because at worst they're boring, which isn't the biggest crime in the world, so if you disregard the last 33 seconds of gameplay, the beginning of the level and the entirety of the drop is genuinely really entertaining. It manages to capture a similar energy to Black Blizzard, which I think is what the level was going for, hence the Kermal style gameplay. Another thing I'm going to praise the level for, this level is drastically under the object limit, the object limit is 80,000, this level rests at 39,000. This means not only is it below the object limit, but it is below the high object count limit. I'm honestly just blown away by how well optimized this level is, and that gives it massive points for me, because I respect levels that can pull that off, because anybody can run this level. That being said, I'm still going to take the ending into account for my score, and with that, I'm going to give Rust a 7 out of 10. Okay, I gotta be real with you, I don't even know how to begin to review Silent Club, because this level is garbage, but the element of garbage is just... I don't even- I don't even know where to begin! Basically, this level is just Silent Club Step, but easier to play. Now, with that being said, it's a lot less fun to play. This level is a lot less creative than Silent Club Step, mainly because instead of having interesting impossible level gameplay like that level does, it's just very generic, at the time, impossible level gameplay, like random straight fly, and two block wide blue orb spams, and it's just really boring. In my opinion, a good way to put it is, Silent Club Step had gotten a redeco at some point, and in my opinion, it did not need it. Silent Club, on the other hand, I feel absolutely would have benefited from a redeco, because the only thing this level could have had going for it is the way it looks, but it doesn't look good. Again, even when this level was released, it was subpar at best. I don't know, I just don't give a shit about this level. It's always stood out as just being really obnoxious and really annoying. I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10. Next up we have Shardscapes. On a surface level, Shardscapes is really, really simple and there's not much to it, but then when you actually look at the greater picture, it's actually a really cool level. The reason why the level seems so simple at face value is because the gameplay is really, really repetitive and honestly a little bit boring. It does what it needs to do, because the level's goal is to just be the hardest robot level, and this level literally is only robot, there's nothing else in the level, and for that it does succeed, it is a really difficult robot level, but it does the bare minimum to do that, it's basically just a really long robot challenge with a lot of hitbox abuse and nothing else. Although I do like the use of multi-input green orbs in this level. For me, what makes Shardscape stand out so much is the sync and the decoration. The level uses the song extremely well, like 
shockingly so for gameplay this simple. And on top of that, the decoration, more specifically the backgrounds, are really intricate and really well made. One final note about the gameplay I do want to mention is that, yeah, the level is pretty brain-dead simple in regards to gameplay. It's not that complicated. Like, you look at it and you get it. But at the same time, the fact this level is as difficult as it is with just one game mode and one gameplay gimmick is really, really cool to me. Because it means this level's difficulty is going to be consistent the whole way through. I feel a lot of levels get really repetitive and that ends up being a bit of a detriment. Like, they'll use the same deco throughout the whole level, or the gameplay won't change up at all throughout the whole level. And usually that ends up being a complaint. However, I also feel that if you know what you're doing, you can make your level repetitive in a way that stands out and ends up being really, really cool, and I think Shardscapes is literally just an example of that. Shardscapes is extremely repetitive and simple throughout the whole way, but due to the way it uses repetitiveness and makes a theme out of it, it ends up being really, really cool, and it doesn't end up being a detriment to the level. This might be a bit controversial, as I feel a lot of people don't enjoy this level, but I feel like a lot of people not enjoying this level really just comes down to the fact that this level exists to fill a niche, and so if you don't like robot challenge style gameplay, which not a lot of people even have experience with, you're probably not going to like this level, but I think for what it sets out to do, it's a perfect level, and so I'm going to rank it a 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Akashic Records. I'm not going to lie, I was afraid to review this because I thought it'd be difficult to review due to having a lot to say, but I can actually put it quite simply. This level is one of the biggest mixed bags I've ever seen. It has some parts that are really, really cool, and then other parts that just look generic and awful. The sad part is, in this level you have parts that look genuinely good, and then you have parts like this, where it literally just uses 1.0 blocks with glow on them, which is probably the weirdest thing I've ever seen. To be clear, a lot of the parts that look bad look bad because there's not much there, and it just looks really, really empty, and the problem with that is when you have parts that are super high detailed and look really good, in comparison, the low effort looking empty parts are going to look more empty and it makes them stand out like a sore thumb. I also find the song choice a bit irritating. I don't usually do this with levels because I find that, oh, maybe it's bias, but really, the song from Digital Descent, that makes this just feel so derivative, because this level is just a generic 2.1 glow level. That's not necessarily a criticism. There are good generic 2.1 glow levels, but in this level's case, it uses the Digital Descent song while being a generic glow level, and it doesn't have a distinct gameplay style, it's just traditional, like, click memory, and because of that, I can't help but just wish I was looking at Digital Descent whenever I look at this level and I don't think I'm alone with that. Let me create a good analogy for what I'm talking about, because I have a sort of hard time explaining it. So, imagine you're creating a Nine Circles level, and you use a super unique, never-before-used song, the level has a chance of standing out. Now imagine you're making a Nine Circles level, and it just uses the song Nine Circles it's going to feel more derivative by default. And that's kind of what happened with Akashic Records, I think. And that's the least of the level's problems. A lot of its problems come from being a mega collab, and I don't just mean like, oh, the parts are inconsistent because it's a mega collab. No, I think things were broken when this level was merged. At two minutes and seven seconds, there's a part that uses glow as the foreground to create this sort of blending effect. This is not an issue because there's levels that do this all the time. The problem is that when the level was merged, the glow was kind of messed up. At 2 minutes and 6 seconds, you can watch the transition between these two parts, and I don't know what exactly happened here. I don't know if color triggers were used incorrectly during the merging, or if it was transparency issues, or what have you, but something was messed up with the colors here, because for a single frame, all of the foreground glow just appears as this gross, harsh green. 
The reason this matters is because if you look at the transition at normal speed without like pausing or anything, you just look at it normally, this flash makes the part look way more harsh than it's supposed to. The level has mistakes like this all over the place, and I'm pretty sure they are due to merging because they all tend to happen in between parts. It's really, really bizarre, and I don't know how this level got messed up this bad. And even if the merging went fine, the decoration just kind of isn't great in a lot of parts, and I don't know, I just don't see a lot of things saving this level. I'm not a fan of Akashic Records, I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 10. Next up we have Descent into Exile, and for limiting itself to grayscale colors, this is really well made. I think it looks really good. I don't have a lot to say about this one, because normally with a lot of these levels I can talk about how the gameplay looks visually, even if I don't understand if it's fun to play or not, because obviously for all these I'm not good enough to beat them. Usually with a lot of them I can at least say if I like the way the gameplay looks in regards to if it's creative. Like with Shardscapes, I can say that that level's really creative, I can call it a challenge, level style gameplay. Even if I don't know how difficult it is, I can at least give my thoughts on what type of gameplay it is. I literally do not understand this level's gameplay. I watched the video of it like maybe five or six times and I just don't understand how this level works. Basically the only thing I can do here is talk about the deco, how well the song is used and all that stuff, and that's basically it, so, you know, whatever. On the note of the song though, I will admit I'm not the biggest fan. The level has this big intense feel that's sort of hard to describe, it's just a really weighted level, like, it's very claustrophobic. Yet the song, I, I don't think the song fits the deco or the level at all. Bad song choice, in my opinion. It's like someone took a really, really edgy Geometry Dash level and then put music from the Tempest 2000 soundtrack over it. It just doesn't work. The song is just a minor gripe, though. I really do like the deco in this level, and I think there were a lot of things done right. Again, I can't comment on the gameplay for this one, so sorry if this is a bit of a half-assed review compared to the other ones. I just don't have a lot to say. I'm going to give Descent into Exile a 7 out of 10. Next we have The Rupture. The Rupture is very heavily inspired by a classic insane demon called, well, Rupture. The Rupture is kind of like, if I could make an analogy, it's like how there's Stalemate and then there's Stalemate Redux. They're both very similar and they fill the exact same niches, but the second level is significantly more difficult. My only complaint is that the deco is just a tad bit too dark. It's not like in the Golden where you can't see anything. It's just a minor gripe. It's just a little bit too dark. But aside of that, this level is really neat. I don't have a lot to say because it pretty much is just a harder version of Rupture with better deco. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it fills a niche and it does a pretty good job. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I'm recording a little bit of an intermission because I need to address something going forward in the series. One of my biggest fears was how I was going to handle situations where a level that was already on the list got moved up above the things I'm reviewing. And it just happened for the first time. Launchpad Labyrinth got moved from 74 to 49, which is above the levels I'm reviewing. I've been trying to figure out for a while how I need to address this, and now that it's actually happened... I need to figure it out now. I've pondered it for around a day, and I've realized that there is no perfect solution to this, so I'm just gonna go with the first solution that sounds right in my head, and that solution is to just lump it in with levels that are added above normally. I'm gonna include them as bonus levels at the end of the review because this benefits you because you get more reviews in one video, and it benefits me because it allows me to stick to the list I already had and just make the video normally. So this is just painless for both of us, so if a level gets added above, just know I'm gonna include it as a bonus level at the end of the video. I apologize if this causes confusion laser down the line, because it most likely will, but this is what I had to do. So yeah, let's just continue with the next review. Next up we have Kappa, and I have an embarrassing confession to make. It took me a year and a half to realize that this level was part of the Greek Letter series, because all this time I thought it was named after the f***ing Twitch emoji. That's not a joke. I thought this was just a funny haha -ha like Walter White. I did not know that this was a serious project and intended to be part of the Greek Letter series. I... <laughs> I'm going into the review with this revelation fresh in my mind. 
I don't know why it took- Oh my god, Twitch is f***ing rotting my brain, I swear to god. Okay, you can't f***ing get mad at me for this. The face is right there. It is not my fault. It is entirely the f***ing Twitch emoji. F*** off. Alright, so mental breakdown aside, this level's actually really, really cool. It has the generic 2.1 feel, but only really the good parts of it, not the bad parts of it. And I do like the generic 2.1 feel to some extent. But the thing is, this level has just a few things and it's sprinkled here and there that make it stand out a lot more than just a generic daily level style decoed level. There's a part a minute and two seconds where the song changes up a little bit and the sync during this part is god tier. It actually genuinely blew my mind. And you know what? This level song isn't copyrighted, so I can actually play this song in the video, and so I'm just gonna show you the part and let it speak for itself. There's also this part at a minute and 30 where you have to curve fly, but the decoration around this curve fly is genuinely mind-blowing with this saw blade that moves alongside you. And there's even little details like the spikes moving down a bit to open up the path, and everything about this little straight fly section is really, really neat. There's also a duel at 37 seconds into the level. I don't know how easy it is to pull off, but it looks like it's really fun to pull off if you can do it, and on top of that, it just looks really satisfying. You know what? This might be a little bit controversial, and I apologize, but I'm gonna give Kappa a 10 out of 10. I really like this level. Next up, we have Bloodlust, and I come to you with some bad news. Just like I did with Limbo, we're gonna have to kinda skim over this a bit and not say a lot, and it's for the same reason I plan on dedicating an entire review to Bloodlust. There's just too much to say in such a little amount of time, and I just don't have a lot to say. What I will say is that this level is a pretty good remake of Bloodbath that does a lot of stuff right, but then it does a lot of stuff wrong, and so this level is a massive mixed bag to me. So short answer, and just giving my review right out of the way, I'm giving Bloodlust a 7 out of 10. Ragnarok is yet again another mixed bag, which is a trend I'm noticing for this batch of levels, but this one unfortunately, at its worst, is really bad. See, when this level looks good, it looks really good, but when it looks bad... It, it looks bad. One thing that stood out to me as annoying is on this one part towards the beginning, there's this face that keeps flashing and I just find it distracting and annoying. Even in completion videos, it just kind of annoys me visually. I do not like this. There's this slope block design at 38, which as far as I'm concerned, the longer you look at it, the worse it looks. I don't like the color contrast here, the weird rocks in the middle of the old school block design just look out of place, and then you look at the 3D lines in the center, what is even going on with those? I don't know, I, I just do not like this block design at all, and there's many, many moments like this throughout the level where I just look at the block design or the background deco or anything else in the level and I'm just like, why? Why was that done at all? This is also just personal bias, but I really don't like the song, which of course, as we've established in the past, does not help. Don't get me wrong, the level does have some good deco throughout, but it just doesn't save the level as far as I'm concerned. I think what's solidified how much I hate this level is both of Technical's 98 deaths. Now normally, I don't factor in other people's opinions or other people's experiences with levels, but look at these deaths. He dies once in a corridor with no indication that that corridor can kill him, and another completely blind while Art of an Eye is on screen. There is nothing visually telling the player that they should have to do anything here. To me, this looks like an end screen, and so this is the equivalent of just dying off screen. It's really, really dumb, and I do not like the fact it's possible to die here at all. These parts should have just been nothing. You should have just had to go through them normally, but nope. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie, I really do not like Ragnarok. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 10. Next up we have Omega Interface, and oh my god, this is a great example of don't judge a book by its cover. Something about the name of the level put me off into thinking, okay, this is just gonna be another generic lull level or something, but no, this level's actually shockingly really cool. 
It's got amazing deco. It's one of the few levels to do the edgy style well and correctly. Like, this level is edgy, but it's edgy in a successful way. It actually manages to be intimidating, which is, you know, what you want an edgy level to do. You want it to intimidate the player. And the fact this level succeeds at that alone is really, really cool. While this level does use some harsh reds, it's not a hell level. In fact, it comes across more to me as a white factory level with some red flashes. And those red flashes add to the intimidation factor because they come across more as creating a sense of urgency than anything. Almost like how factories will have emergency lights that'll flash red during like a fire or something. There's also the final part which seems normal in every way except for these little eyes that are staring at you and blinking. Almost as if they're waiting for the player to die to the end. It really adds to the atmosphere and bumps up your nerves a lot at the end. Adding to this almost threatening mechanical feel, the song has this almost, like, muddy, metallic sound to it that really adds to the decoration. In fact, I'd argue that the level does a lot to make the song stand out. Ignoring the intimidation factor, the decoration in this level in and of itself is just stunning. There's a lot of reasons to go into this level just to look at it. It is a beautiful level, and that's kind of impressive considering how simple it is. This is a classic case of simple yet effective. The end screen is also really, really cool how it's like these two metal doors slamming shut on the player and in this little window is all the people who worked on the level scrolling by. I think that's really neat. It's a really cool end screen. Everything about this level is really solid and yeah, I love this level a lot. I'm going to be giving Omega Interface a high 10 out of 10. That is it for the initial 10 levels of this video, however we have two levels that I'm going to include as bonus levels. Next up we have Sazerix, and Sazerix is a level that I wanted to like. It looked really, really cool on face value, but the more I look at it, the more it just falls apart. I'm not a fan of the block deco, the gameplay is just strange, which we'll get into more in a bit. And on top of all of that, the level doesn't sink very well. Now I want to be clear, because I know I just said a lot of negative stuff right off the bat, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's passable and it's alright, but it's just not the greatest. The level will throw stuff at you like random UFO spams and random consistency waves that feel like they're nerfed top 1 sections rather than just normally built parts, and I don't really know how to feel about that. Another problem is that because of issues like the strange, unsynced gameplay, the level does not use the song that well, which sucks because this is a really unique song for a level to have. I think what sucks about all of this, though, is that it just reads as a missed opportunity to me. The first part of the level has really interesting and unique decoration, it uses the song really well, but the second you get to the drop, the level just becomes one big disappointment for me. With all that said, I think I'm going to give Sazerix a 6 out of 10. Next up we have Launchpad Labyrinth, and I do not know what the hell I was just looking at. Like, please tell me I'm being trolled here. This looks like a really bad LDM of a 2.0 level. I don't know what to say. This level legitimately just does not look good in my opinion. It looks like a bad 2.0 remake of Castlemania, and I'm not just saying that because of the song, I'm saying that because the level follows Castlemania's format beat by beat. Just imagine Castlemania, but it was made in 2.0, and it only has one single path. I don't know, I don't have a lot to say, this level is just really, really boring. The boss fight at the end is really, really cheesy, I just... I don't know, I cannot take this level seriously. It is legitimately one of the most boring things I've ever seen. As for a number, I'm gonna give Launchpad Labyrinth a 1 out of 10. Like, I don't know, there's just not a lot here. It's just, if you took Castlemania, only had one path, super buffed it, and then made the deco terrible. If you want to play a good version of Launchpad Labyrinth, just play Castlemania's Reaper path. I don't know, this just does not look good to me. And with that, we have reached the end. I do have a bit to say about the list, though, if you don't mind indulging me. Doing this series has made me view the Demons list in a very different light. And the main thing I want to talk about here is top ones and the bad rep they get. See, I get it. People are sick of generic red and black hell levels, and they're sick of levels that exist for no reason other than to be the hardest level. But every top one we've had so far, and all the upcoming ones so far, at least have one thing that helps them stand out and be unique. As we get further down the list, I've noticed that we've had levels that exist 
for seemingly no purpose. They're just generic and they don't serve a purpose at all. Having to review Akashic Records pushed this video back because I could have easily just said Akashic Records is a generic 2.1 extreme and that would have fulfilled the review, but I didn't want to. I wanted to be thorough and actually have something interesting to say. I guess what I'm saying is, is doing this series has made me respect Top Ones a bit more because Top Ones could be way worse. They could be Akashic Records or Ragnarok in the sense of just being forgettable levels that no one's ever going to talk about when they fall off the list. I think for that reason, I am way less scared of a top one being bad than I am of like a level at 145 or a level at 72 being bad, because this innocuous spot on the list allows for levels that are way more forgettable and way less important. I'll just put it this way. Everything above 45 on the list, I've had something to talk about and something interesting, but the farther below 45 we get, the more generic levels we get, and I feel this is going to be the case for a lot of people. I mean, like, I'm more likely to talk about Slaughterhouse and Acheron in casual conversation than I am Delibit Oblivio or Celestial Force or Dubcore X. And for that reason, I'm expecting this series to get a bit more negative as we go forward due to levels being more generic. Now that's not to say it'll be all negativity, because if that was the case I wouldn't be doing this series because it would be boring. I know there are a bunch of really cool levels on the list that I've never heard of, I'm more so just saying that the next episode or two are probably going to be really negative because right now we're at this slump point on the list where the levels are just really forgettable. What I'm waiting for, and it's going to take like one or two episodes to do, but I'm waiting for the passion projects to start happening. These start to appear uh, below 80 on the list and there's stuff like Storming Summit, Requiem, Luchiverse, Hyper Paracosm, Molten Core, Shutdown, Spatial Rend, the Sonic Wave levels in the Sonic Wave remakes, Cybernetic Crescent, Molten Gear, Of Ambrosia, Goner. Once we get to that part of the list, the series will pick up again. But I'm just expecting Episode 6 and Episode 7 to not be that great. And I hope you all understand that. I'll try to keep the episodes entertaining so that they're not just skip fodder. I will find entertaining things to say, because no matter how generic a level, there's going to be something interesting to say. But I'm more just not looking forward to it myself. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you'd like to watch every episode in the series up until this point, there will be a playlist in the description. I highly recommend checking that out. If you'd like to support me, all it really takes is a subscription, and honestly, feel free to comment. I try to read every comment I get, and I usually answer every question I get. Either way, with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed.